Hey people, it's me again. So, anyways, have about almost a week left of my 30s as far as that goes. You know? It doesn't seem like that. And then I'll turn like 40 next week. You know? So, one of the interesting things, you know, that also occurred on my birthday, because then I was thinking about it in the past couple of days, you know, that movie, uh, Ferris Bueller's Day Off. Yeah. That happened to be, like, one of my most favorite videos. Yeah. As far as that goes. And in a way, I don't really remember watched it until I was in high school, at least around, like, um, like, my junior year, I think, because then right around that time was when I watched it non-stop at some point, because I remember watching it at home, and then I remember suggesting it for, um, the class to watch as far as that goes and then a couple of other stuff there but the first time I watched it was uh, on the way to um, the ski trip that I did that year it was during my junior year of high school you know and I should have also gone during my senior year of high school you know what I mean? And then... Uh, on the way back... It was the... The... The movie Big. As far as that goes. But I think they were both like... In the same... Year as far as that goes, but I do remember, like, watching Big a few times, I think. And I think that might have been the movie that that established Tom Hanks in some regard. Yeah. So, anyways, that is one of the things I was going to have to mention about that sort of stuff here. So, anyways... Um, as far as that goes with, like, that movie, like, Ferris Bueller's Day Off, you know, it's always been considered to be an iconic movie, maybe even a bit, you know, sacrosanct, you know, for certain people, and a lot of people had grew up watching the movie, you know, especially if there were some people who were already in high school about the time when the movie came out. You know what I mean? So, anyways, as I was kind of saying about this sort of stuff now, when it comes to, um, that, you know, and if anybody who has such fondness for Chicago... Uh, and then you would see all these other little things, you know, where they were, they were going to the Cubs game, and they were in the Chicago Museum of Modern Art, and you know, and then going around like Von Stoppen Day. Yeah, that was like another thing that I remember in that movie where they were doing Von Stoven Day. You know. But, in a way, there's a lot of other uh, movies that also, like, take place in Chicago, or at least, you know, partially <laughs> take place in Chicago, you know, as far as when it comes to, like, the original... Home Alone and Home Alone 2, as far as that goes. I mean, it's been almost like, 
30 years for like the second one, but it already been like 30 years for the first Home Alone movie. You know, if I remember correctly about all that, you know, so anyways, as far as that goes, when it comes to this sort of thing, you know, but then what I really mean by that was, you know, how there was the O'Hare Airport, you know, as far as that goes. So, anyways, but that was like the first airport that I flown to was the O'Hare Airport in Chicago. Yeah. But this was like way back in 89, I think. Yeah. Because I was about... I think I was still seven. I hadn't even turned eight yet. As far as that goes. So. Anyways. As I was kind of saying about this sort of stuff there. You know what I mean? So. And. The whole. Reason I was going over there. It was. To one of my cousin's. Wedding. That year. You know. So if I remember correctly, when it came to that, you know, it was, it was like a two o'clock flight that was the time that we left John Wayne. And then it was eight o'clock when we got there, but then the plane was late. And so we missed our connection because originally we were supposed to fly to Chicago, then have a connecting flight to Peoria. You know. And so what had happened was like our our luggage got there, but but not us. And so we had to spend the night at one of the at that hotel that's like near the airport or was just right next to the airport I don't even really remember it was one it was supposed to be like the Radisson's or the Hilton or something like that that was like near the airport itself but the last time I was actually there at the airport was about 20 years ago, it was about a, a couple of weeks before the attacks. Yeah. But that was like an entirely different story altogether. You know, where we were going to Chicago to visit mom while she was there on a business trip. Yeah. And then she ended up getting a job to go to Dallas. And what happened there was we ended up buying more tickets to go to Dallas at the same time. You know, because originally it was intended just to go from me to Chicago. And then we had the tickets to go to Dallas on a short notice like that. So anyways, that was like the whole story there. So. Anyways. One of the things that I wanted to mention about the source story here was. Um, I think it was on the way to... Dallas that we were in the airport in the O'Hare airport and I was uh, mentioning to dad about about you know 
in Terminal 3 where there was the split, you know, where Concourse H and Concourse K, you know, and I think that was on the way back, and I didn't begin to think about it. It was on the way back, and I said that that was where the whole thing with the plot device for Home Alone, how come why Kevin got lost and ended up going to New York instead of Florida because, you know, there was some other person that was wearing nearly the exact same coat as uh, Kevin's dad. It was nearly the same build and height. And so naturally, as she, he got mixed up there as far as that goes and I think one of the things that a lot of people didn't really notice there there's a little bit of like a food court you know in between the the, the K concourse and the H concourse you know so that was like the thing there and I think I remember we might have ate there or or had a snack there I'm not exactly certain because this is a bit of long ago so I mean so anyways um the other thing that I was going to mention about it there was I'm trying to remember here because I remember it was on the way to Dallas there was a storm and it caused a, a bit of delay and then they had to then something else happened where they had to shut down half all the one rays and so therefore even though we were already in the planes and all that you know we still had to wait about like a ha half an hour or an hour to actually get off the ground and go to where we were going so that was like the thing there but as as far as that goes, you know, I remember it was Shrek was the in-flight movie to Chicago, and then it was uh, someone like, somebody like you, or someone like you, I can't even remember the name of it, but that was that Ashley Judd and Hugh Jackman movie that was, that was, uh, that was popular back in the one as far as that goes you know so that was like the thing that they had then you know but it's like a lot different when it came to like the 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 in-flight entertainment you know because then it was something like back then it was they had CBS in flight from American Airlines it was something like um NBC and fly things like on uh, United, but I don't know if it was something like ABC from Delta or something like that. So they would have had like little clips from uh, Everybody Loves Raymond, and then they had like uh, clips from 60 Minutes and that sort of stuff there after the movie. So that was the thing there. You know, it wasn't until maybe about like a couple, like at least 10, maybe 15 years ago was when the, the in-flight entertainment started to change where, where um, you know, that now we can watch our own in-flight movies and in-flight TV shows instead of having to, you know, watch whatever they provide that they're providing you know what I mean as far as that goes but then I remember that was like the year that we still had like those in-flight meals you know it, it wasn't until like I think if you go on a flight that's longer than three hours or close to that that's when you get like get like a meal because other than that you would get like a snack and that was it because then I remember something where 
we're on one of the flights back to Dallas that we only got like a little bag that was for the for the snacks and that was basically it. And I think I remember on one of the flights back from Dallas to here we me and my mom had got like got something from Boston Market which is which was supposed to be like a a box that contained like a sandwich and uh, some other stuff there you know as far as that goes but then in a way it was like at that time that was when American and I think maybe a couple of other airlines had also allowed people to bring their own food on rather than you know buy rather than like provide the meal as far as that goes you know what I mean but as far as that goes you know the the I think the airports that I've been in and out of it's it, I mean, as far as actually flying in and out, it would be like, um, like LAX, Chicago, O'Hare, DFW, Dallas Love Field, Kansas City, and then San Jose. And then San Diego and, uh, Long Beach were one of the airports that I've been to but never flew in or out of as far as that goes and as far as um what was it like um SFO I think I drove past it but never really gone in or out of it I mean or at least just to look no, but that's just another thing altogether. Yeah. So, anyways, um, I guess that's probably it. So, talk to you guys later.